morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. So we told you we're celebrating with the Barbados Defense Force. It's wonderful to have some of the officers uh, here celebrating with us today. Uh, we're going to be talking about the work that they do and sharing more so we get more behind the scenes. So uh, we're happy to have Captain Donovan Smith, who is officer in charge of the BDF drone unit. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I've heard the name behind the scenes and uh, maybe we've had conversations yes. through third parties. Yes. So it's always great to put a face to the names and, and that kind of thing. And of course, Lieutenant Commander Neil Matthew, Coast Guard, who is in charge of the cyber unit. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have you with us as well. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having uh, us. First of all, thanks for the work you do every day to keep us safe and secure here in Barbados. And these two units, though, are units that you probably wouldn't have heard about a few years ago and it speaks to how your units continue to grow and develop uh, based on what's happening in the world to ensure that we are in step and in some instances probably ahead of what's happening uh, when it comes to security and really looking out for our people and getting your job done so congratulations thank you now i'll start with you uh captain smith let's talk a little bit about the drone unit i know that unit has really changed the face of how things are done particularly just a few weeks ago we had hurricane barrel and in the aftermath of that i know the job of your units you, you guys had to go out and physically assess what was done now in the advent of having drones that's just one aspect of how things have changed for you so let's talk about a bit about the drone unit and really what your mandate is and how you've helped to change the way that you're able to conduct your business. Uh, good morning, thanks um, Tisha. So the drone unit was formed in 2020, just before COVID. And we used it as a force multiplier and we have to look at how technology enhances the world. So, you know, sometimes you have the negative side of technology, you have the positive side of technology. So from a military perspective, technology is a form of innovation. And the drones actually helped make us more efficient, more competent, more current, and give us a timely response to respond to make informed decisions as you go forward from a soldiering perspective. So, yes, you use birds as one example. So part of our mandates would be disaster assessment, disaster search and rescue, um, sometimes the aid and assistance in the national security effort in terms of assisting our civil power, our friends in the civil power. And that's, that's basically what we do every day you you wouldn't see us but we see you from the eyes in the sky wow that is that's a very interesting thing um and for you uh lieutenant commander matthew um talk to us about the cyber unit likewise i would imagine maybe not in 2020 but by this name and uh what you do i would imagine that it, it changes ever so often so talk to be talk to us about the mandate of your particular department. Yeah, so the cyber unit is a bit older than the drone unit. Uh, <laughs> we were formed out of uh, for thinking of the then chief of staff. Um, he recognized that the digital domain um, was very significant. Uh, it was not only uh, the coast that we have to protect, it was not only land forces, we had to look beyond that. As Donovan said, we, what we did with drones was innovation. And this was part of innovation as well, because you can't be stagnant as a force. If you stay where you were, you can't move forward. Uh, so we looked at the digital landscape and recognized that that was where potential threats could come at a national level. And we started to develop a unit to start to not necessarily counteract to fight anyone, but to defend our landscape, our critical infrastructure, uh, and support and assist our, our other uh, government entities. Uh, we are partnered with MIST in this fight. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do here in the cyber unit. Let's talk about the roles and responsibilities within your unit and um, a little bit more about what you do. I would imagine that you can't necessarily spill all the beans. We can't. However, when we talk about ICT departments mm -hmm. and information and communications depart uh, departments across companies, they do something a little different from when you talk about cyber units. So when you mentioned that you are a cyber unit and you're partnering with MIST, 
Um, let's kind of delve a little bit more into what this encompasses. Uh, what types of threats are we talking about when we think cybersecurity uh, that, you, that you have to work on through this unit? So it's funny you should mention other companies because what we didn't lead into, yeah. both yeah. Donovan and I are actually reserve members of the Barbados Defense Force. We are part-timers. Uh, so we use our civilian skills to enhance what we do in the BDF. Uh, by nature, I am a cybersecurity professional uh, at CABC Caribbean. Uh, that's my bread and butter, my eight to four. Uh, and then I do this. Uh, in terms of our roles and responsibility, what we try to manage is what is happening in our landscape in terms of, of, of our threat actors. Uh, sometimes you would see uh, persons trying to deface our, our networks and our, our websites uh, from the government perspective. Um, there's always things like uh, phishing threats where people send you emails and you click on that wrong uh, link and you start to get into trouble. It's sort of managing the network post that we try to do a lot before that happens though. Uh, we do a lot of awareness training and we intend to do a lot more of that awareness training, not only in the BDF, but across all government entities to make sure that people are focused and doing the right thing. Captain Smith, let's delve a little bit more. You said assessment and search and rescue and so on are areas that you've kind of been able to beef up through the drone unit. Can we talk about your fleet? I, I don't necessarily, I know it might be a little touchy, <laughs> but in terms of what you do as the Eye in the Sky, I remember there used to be some program called Eye in the Sky yes. a few years ago. You know, how does that truly, uh, getting a little more granular, enhance how you're able to secure Barbados and do your job? So, it, so being in Eye in the Sky, you have a, a way to cross area, you have a way to surface area you can see. You can you see a, a broader foot map and then you actually know where the threats are before you actually deploy or infantry or foot soldiers on the ground. And it provides full intel full information back to wherever you're going back to and it helps make informed decisions remember it's using technology as a force multiplier a force enhancer and being innovative so the, so the, as command Matthew said we're both reservists and we look at innovation leadership with technology bringing everything together and what that has done so far it has attracted a lot of young people which means that we can pass the baton pretty soon and it enhances the outlook of the force. So, and it gives people, gives all the young soldiers, as well as young people who are interested in a, in a military career, something to look forward to. You know, to use the technology as a positive outlook. That's how we look at it in the military. All right, this obviously is, um, again, and we've talked about this extensively, an opportunity for people to grasp opportunities. Correct. Because having started this in 2020, uh, it, it will be interesting to hear about your rise through the ranks and where you started and how you got to where you are today. So the journey was started in 2020 under the vision of the then chief of staff, Colonel Granham and Major Proverbs. And then ironically, it so happened that COVID started in 2020 and we were the only team to provide the coastal, the coastal security as well as the add additional security up at, the, up at the prison. From there, we just started to grow and grow and then add support to wherever needed support. For example, remember 22, you had COVID, then you had the Ashfall, then you had Elsa, then you fast forward, you had Brett, then you had um, crop over, then you have other other search and rescues happening. So it, it started to prove, prove its worth and show its worth and say, hold on, this is making sense. This is actually helping us to respond quicker be more efficient and then be more competent in what we do. So for example, the mantra is you're current, you're competent, but more importantly, you're staying futuristic. And that's what makes us continue to be relevant today. That's what makes the soldiering and the military um, more current and relevant. So I mean, cliche is scrub over and we hear, I right, just want soldiers in this small country, you know, somewhere Gabby. No, no, no. <laughs> but we can say yes, yes, yes. Right? That's what we can say because of what we do. So both cyber drones we come hand in hand because we're taking technology, we're enhancing the force, and then we're actually being more efficient. Wonderful answer to the first part of my question. Where you came in and where you are now, interested always in that, um, you know, 
you're now a captain, even though you're a reservist, yes. as you call it. So uh, I know there are a lot of young people looking on who might be interested in Right, finance. so I started, so first I would say up and on. And I, so I started. All right. <laughs> <laughs> up and on work. Right. I started, um, I was a cadet at Commerce School in 1993, from 1993 to 2000. And the cadet corps did a lot for me in terms of character building, being able to face the world. So I believe in giving back. So I, technically in 2004, I was given the opportunity to only give back, give back that time. And I always wanted to give back six years, seven years, which is N plus one. 20 years later, I have risen through the ranks from officer cadet to second lieutenant to lieutenant. I know a captain. And it has been a, it has been a wonderful journey, interesting at times. And I would tell anybody, if you have a passion to, be, to want to give back, that's where really satisfaction comes. We are reservists. It is not only a labor of love, but it is a passion to see people develop, see people grow and enhance themselves. There's no better satisfaction when you train someone and you see them develop to reach their, the pinnacle of their career or what they want to achieve within their lives. And that's, that's why we're still here. I mean, Commander Mahfoud is a 30 year veteran. I'm a 20 year veteran and that's where that's where the cookie crumbles basically all right why did you make the decision to be reservist well i i started to make that decision myself um as donovan said and, and i go a bit further than him <laughs> again uh cadet at common mayor it was something i loved to do uh, i originally wanted to join the army full-time but uh took another path and then um i remember i was doing something in Bridgetown when Colonel Bostick saw me, he was, he had been one of our leaders in, in a previous life. And he said, why are you not at recruiting? And I was like, recruiting? So fast forward, I uh, ended up recruiting. Uh, I spent some life as an enlisted soldier in the regiment. Uh, then I transitioned to become an officer in 2000, uh, moved through the ranks there in the regiment for a while. And then on taking command of the cyber unit, uh, transitioned again. So. Well, that has been some quite quite some time, um, but it's it's wonderful to have um, two very close units in terms yeah, of because you have to but it, we but have imagine to work, work very closely yeah, together yeah. in terms of what you do and a relatively young units as well that have to like every other unit but particularly because of the way technology is moving across the world have to constantly. Uh, keep going and uh, growing, making sure that you truly are ahead of what's happening. What are some of the agencies that uh, you work with, not only here, but maybe outside of... I see them smiling. Are there questions I'm not supposed to ask? I don't know what he's smiling at. <laughs> um, <laughs> primarily, we work with, of course, uh, the Barbados Police Service. Yep. Um, from a law enforcement uh, perspective, we work the regional security system, of course, yes. from a regional perspective. Um, we prison. do also work, uh, Donovan will work with the prison service uh, and, a, and a lot of other entities in terms of when we do drone training and that type of stuff. Uh, we focus on that. Uh, we do uh, work with uh, other countries as well. I'm actually on Sunday departing to go to uh, Miami to Southern Command to attend a cybersecurity workshop. So we do get uh, work with a lot of our, our, our partners in, in other countries. Yeah, and it's very interesting time that you're here. Particularly now, one of the things that's in the news is about the big cybersecurity um, issue, the update that they had last week. So that reinforces how interconnected our world is, Correct. how important it is to be on top of things when it comes to cybersecurity, ICT, and everything else associated with it. So I want to thank you, gentlemen, for coming out and sharing with us today. And of course, maybe delving deeper than you have before yes. into exactly what you do, um, because these conversations I find were, were lacking for a long time where a lot of people only get to engage with you when they see you kind of passing by or maybe doing joint patrols or what have you. And I think it's important that we understand the depth of the work that you do. So before you go, a uh, final word to anyone looking on who might want to consider giving back or, you know, pursuing a life in the military what i would say is that both from a reserve perspective and a full-time perspective 
If you look at it, the military is the only organization in the world that you can find every single profession, from doctors, lawyers, engineers, legal assistants, clerks. And if you choose to, you have that, you have that avenue. Yes, commander is a, a cybersecurity expert within um, the private sector. I'm a telecoms consultant in my private application. But you can also, you can, you can fuse the two. And once you fuse the two and you have the right attitude, the right aptitude and the right work ethic, you're good to go. All right, and for you? Well, I think Donovan has said, said the majority of it. At the end of the day, I, I've had a, a very rewarding life as a reservist. I've been able to live both my civilian life and had the opportunity to serve uh, as a reservist in the Barbados Defense Force, which has been a phenomenal opportunity for me. Um, and I encourage anybody who wants to have that, that balance. Uh, it, it's a great balance to have, uh, serving your country, but you can still do what you want to do um, on the outside. So a great to, thing to do. Okay, did you tell me that he was around for 30 years or 13 years? 32. No, com no comment. 32? 32. So that right. means you were here for almost the whole time, the BDS. Oh, no, 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 no. It's 45. We're, not, we're not, heading to 45. 32 or 45 are very close are very to that different number. Numbers. No, 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 no. You're no. very close no. to that number, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine that next time you come back, you'll be able to kind of do some juxtapositioning and tell us what things were like then as compared to now. How the uniform has changed, for example, when we're talking things a little more on the quiet side. So we're going to come to you because uh, we invited you to come sit on the couch to kind of talk about these things formally. But we want to walk in your shoes too, our boots. So we're going to make sure that we come. <laughs> so we're going to make sure that we come out and share with our audience what you see from where you sit and what you do as well. So again, thanks for your service and thanks for coming in to share with us. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. And have a good day. Morning, morning. Good morning, good morning to you.